Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody, Zach here for Friday Night Flies, the White River Fly Shop, Bass Pro in Tawasson. You hear that? It's actually quiet today. Um, so we're open a little bit early right now for Christmas, uh, 9 to 9, so if you're able to come in, that's seven days a week. I think we're open, yeah, 9 to 9 on uh, Sundays too, which is pretty crazy. Come on in, get your Christmas shopping in. It's a little quieter in the morning. As you can see, there's not many people in the store right now, so it's a good time to get in here if you can. So today, I've got a cool little lake fly. So this is a really old school wet fly. It dates back way, way back when, about 200 years or so. Um, so it's still around, so that should tell you something. Um, so this is one I'm gonna be using. Uh, they use it in the UK a lot for uh, sea run, uh, sea trout. So, me and Jordan have been playing around with a lot of cutthroat patterns and uh, fishing off some beaches locally here. So we're uh, trying to experiment and get them all figured out and dialed in. So this is one that I'm going to be tying, uh, fishing for sea run cutties over here. Um, so there's a couple different variations that you can do. Um, it's called, this one's called the Bloody Butcher. So it's it actually it originally called the Moon Fly. And uh, you'll see why with one of the materials that I've got here. Uh, probably why they came up with that name. But it was uh, invented by a butcher, of all things, so that's kind of where it got its name from. So the butcher is a style of fly. Um, so they all kind of look the same, and then they've got uh, just different materials, different colors. Yada, yada, yada. You know how it goes. Um, so, yeah, so it's a really cool fly. It's a fun one to tie. It's got that old-school wet fly look to it. So let's uh, head on up and uh, head on down and check it out. All right, so there it is, the bloody butcher. So as you can see, it's got that old-school look to it. Pretty cool. Not too stoked on how big that rib is, so I'm just gonna downsize it on this one. So that's one variation with a feather wing. That's the one I'll be tying today. This is another variation using uh, also a feather wing, but different feather altogether. So this is peacock sword. This is a really cool material. Uh, I love using it in flies. It's got a really cool look, really really iridescent. One of those, those magical properties of uh, peacock, which is kinda cool. So. For a hook, I'm actually using a Gamagatsu SL45 bonefish hook. So I'm using this because some of the spots where we fish for these sea run cuts here, uh, you can counter coho, especially in the summer. So having something with a stronger wire is definitely going to be helpful. I'm just going to start my thread behind the eye using some 70 Danville and black, UTC 70, some 80 Uni, all that stuff works quite well. Just take that back, kind of in between the point and the barb. We're going to add a tail, so all I'm using it for that is just some red saddle hackle. So strip off some of the material here. So I'm just going to separate some fibers there. I'm just going to peel that off the stem. Once I line them all, there we go. Just kind of fold it up. There we go. Measure that about the length of the body. I'm just going to tie that in right on top. A couple loose wraps. There we go. Trim that away. Now I'm going to add in my rib. So I've just got some small uh, Uni French oval. This just to add a little bit of contrast to the body, a little bit of segmentation. Now for the body, I'm using some Lagerton Mini Flat Braid in gold. This is some awesome material. I've got a few different colors. It's not cheap, but it's extremely durable. And I'm going to tie in as well. Just tie that all in. Take your time. Make sure it's nice and flat and even. And stop just before the eye. So now I'm just going to wind that tinsel, that flat braid up. Tuck that away. There we go. Just a nice flat body. You can use tinsel if you want as well. I'm using the flat braid just because it's a little more durable. Especially fishing in the salt water. Um, off the beaches, these these flies get take a beating. That's for sure. 
and the rocks and all that stuff. Not to mention the salt water, so. <clears throat> there we go. Alright, this uni French oval. Take a full turn at the back. And this is a small, that's a little nicer looking. You get four, almost five turns. Capture it in. Two wraps on the one side, two on the other. Trim away, like so. And just kind of tidy up that head a little bit. Perfect. And then we're going to invert our vise. And now I'm going to add in a throat. So I'm just going to add some more of those red hackle fibers. Peel away. I'm going to measure that so it's a little shorter than the length of the body. And I'm just going to come over top. I'm going to pinch everything together. I'm going to pull straight down. So that's called a pinching loop. And I'm just going to splay those fibers out. So it looks kind of like so, with my thumb. I'm just going to give it, there we go, that's a better look there, now it's tightened down. Lock it all in place, trim away. Again, just tidy up that head a little bit. This just makes tying in the wing a little bit easier. Alright, now we can rotate it back to normal. Now for the wing, I'm actually using these blue mallard feathers. So these come off the wings. So if you've got any friends that duck hunt, definitely hit them up. It's a really cool feather. It's got that nice iridescence similar to the, uh, the peacock sword. It kind of changes color depending on how you're looking at it. So I'm just going to section myself off a little bit. Just using my scissors. I'm just going to pull some away there. So you just want to kind of find a size that works for you. I'm actually going to go a little bigger than that. You just kind of brush them all together with your fingers. It actually pushes it all back together and you can do that again. So all these fibers kind of act like Velcro together. Dip my scissors in, there we go. That's probably good enough. Uh, one more time, a little bit bigger. These wings on these old flies are definitely the trickiest part. Choosing the right amount of fibers. Uh, let's go right there. Now instead of pulling it off like I would with a bronze mallard, I'm actually going to cut it. These fibers can be quite brittle and they come apart easily. So there's... Oh, I've messed it all up as you can see. So there's one side. So you usually need left and a right as you can see there. It's like one from one side, one from the other. If I were to tie a bunch of these, I would do this this stage right before, then that way I've got all the pairs set up, ready to go. Just stick my fingers in there. You can take a bodkin too if you want. That's a little small. Joy's the tying live. You guys get to see us messing around and figuring this all out as we go. There we go. So like I said, uh, last week we got some a new member joining the party. We got Dana Harrison. He's from the Kootenai region. So he's going to be bringing a whole different whack of flies for you guys. Probably a lot more nymphs and things like that. I know he loves fishing for bull trout up that way as well. As we do down here too. It's a lot of fun catching those fish. So he finally got his camera in the mail. He's been waiting on that one for a while. So hopefully we'll get a video from him in the next week or so. There's into my other side there. <clears throat> so I got that nice blue shiny side facing towards me. And like you saw with my purple spay, you kind of just align those tips. Okay. Now this is going to be so kind of like so. so. I got them on the side. I got kind of the tips a little bit past the bend of the hook. I'm just going to fold those on the side like so. So the higher up you have these, the higher that wing's going to sit. So I want this to be not too high. So again, I'm going to do a pinching loop. So just a nice loose wrap. I pinch everything together and I pull straight down. So that's how you set these wings. And now you can come and have a look at it. You know what? 
I am quite pleased with that. That was a that was a good one there. I wanted it to sit a little higher. Actually, you know what? I kind of do. I'm just gonna pull that up. Just pull it up ever so slightly. This way I can see a little bit more of the body of the fly. So I've already got a notch in there. I'm just gonna put my thread back on that notch, pinch everything together, pull straight down, nice and tight. Have a look. I'm just going to reposition these one more time. That one wing is not quite sitting how I like it to. Your side anyway. So let's just get one on one side of the hook, one on the other. Just kind of get them sitting how we want. Once again. Alright, one last time. You only get a couple tries at this with these feathers. They'll start to fall apart on you if you're not careful. Just push that how I want. <clears throat> That's all right, that'll fish. As you fish it, it's gonna come apart anyway. So now I'm just gonna trim that away. Nice and tight. Now we're just gonna tidy up that head. So you get a couple shots setting these wings. Like I said, this fiber can be a little Temperamental sometimes. Just gonna tidy up that head a little bit. Now we're gonna whip finish. I'm just gonna do one because I'm gonna seal that up. With some of my favorite material, that Solarez bone dry. This stuff is awesome. It's got the applicator brush, so it makes it nice and easy to go on. Place it on there. Careful not to get any on that wing. It's got a thick enough viscosity, it's not going to run on you too bad. There we go. If you're looking for a stocking stuffer for the fly tire in your life, this would definitely be the item to get. And we're just going to zap that up. Oh, and there's the music. <laughs> Alright, guys. So there you have it. That is the Bloody Butcher. That wing could be a little better. Like I said, that last one I did that I showed you at the beginning, that one was, was sitting perfect. But play around with it. See what you think. Play around with the colors too. Um, you don't have to do a gold body. I think the original was silver. Um, it's a fun fly to tie. And they look pretty cool too. Let's head on up and sign out. There you go, guys. That's the, uh, the Bloody Butcher. Cool little fly. Looks great. I'm sure it's going to swim well as well. You can also, you don't have to use these just in the ocean for cuts, you can use them uh, as a wet fly. So you can definitely use it in lakes and stuff like that. I'm definitely going to give it a go on my home waters. Um, definitely play around with it, even in the springtime when the fry start hatching. You bet that thing's going to get hit by some cutties. So, um, pretty versatile all around pattern, tied on whatever hook you like. Uh, if you're going to use it for still water, you don't want to uh, splurge on the bonefish hooks. Um, any kind of nymph hook, I've got some mustads here, some 33.99 size 8. Um, 8, 10, 12s, probably a good size to tie this one in. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. We don't see you next week. Have a great Christmas. Um, hopefully we can put together one more show. I know we're starting to get pretty busy here in the store, so I'm not sure if I'm going to have time or not. But uh, we'll see you guys probably in the new year, because after Christmas I'm going to be heading down to Portland for New Year's. So um, there's a new fly shop down there. There's a Portland fly shop. going to be checking that out and let you guys know how that is. Um, yeah, so have a great Christmas. Happy holidays, and uh, we'll see you guys in the new year. Thank mm -hmm. you.